Nashua, Wisconsin. Welcome, you guys. I see there are a whole bunch of you on here already. I am happy to be stamping with you tonight. All right, I, I, I know, I, I'm doing really good tonight. I already got my iPad set up. I've got all the things out. I think we're gonna be good. <laughs> Did you guys have a good weekend? And a good week, for that matter. I, um, I see Sandy says the Bucks pulled out a win today. <laughs> The Packers did not. It was pretty dismal. The Lions won the first game they've won in a long time, so good for them. Our Packers did not look very stellar today. It did get a little exciting at the end, but they blew it. <laughs> somebody has to lose, right? And somebody has to win, so we congratulate them. Hi from the Netherlands, and Marsha from Texas, and Nedra from South Carolina. Yeah, so we've got Wendy here from Minnesota. What's up with the pack? I don't know. I think they're having some, I don't know, growing pains maybe. Can you guys tell I cut my bangs? They look kind of stupid. <laughs> they'll, they'll go back to normal. <laughs> Whose son won their U15 bowling tournament today? Sarah, yay, that's exciting. Congratulations. And I got somebody here from the Northwoods, Audrey from the Northwoods. Welcome in Arizona. My crown looks fabulous, Connie says. Thank you, Connie. I know I haven't worn my crown in a little bit, have I? Because I had that awesome hat from Alora, the candy corn hat, right? <laughs> I have been eating candy corn. It's coming out of my ears. It's crazy. Um, what's happening? So... I had a really busy week. My mom came to visit on Tuesday, which was super nice. We went and did a little shopping. And uh, then we spent the evening with um, Haley and Jared. We went over to their house, took them ice cream, because you know that's what I do. <laughs> and uh, that was fun. My mom got to play with the babies. And my, my little Val, she adores her Gigi. That's what we call great grandma, Gigi. She just adores her and she just cuddles right in. And um, it's super cute because um, I lost my train of thought because I was looking at the thumbs up thing. <laughs> I know it's a lot, right? Oh, I know what I was going to say. My mom loves to show pictures to the kids. So her and Val would snuggle in a chair and my mom would have her phone and she'd just go through all her photos and tell her about all of them. And Val would be, who's that? And, oh, there's Tommy. Tommy's her favorite. That's my nephew. So that would be her cousin. And she just loves Tommy. And he is, I want to say he's going to be nine this month. He just adores her so sweet is he just like oh I miss Val so much and he's so good with her so it's really cute but um she just spent hours showing her pictures on her phone and telling her all about it and it's just so stinking cute <laughs> and then on Wednesday we had Val and Dawson all day long and that was fun and boy did our day just get away from us I loaded up the double stroller we were gonna go to the um, the nature preserve where I go ride my bike to and go for a walk every day. We were gonna go there for a walk. And then I fed the kids lunch and then they looked tired and then we thought they better get a nap first. And then when the nap was over, then the moms was coming to get them. <laughs> Jared and Haley came over for spaghetti dinner and I was supposed to pick Molly up from school because Steve usually picks her up from school on Wednesdays and he's gone. So I was going to pick Molly up from school. So I made her, her favorite is green jello. She told me green jello is the best jello in the world. There shouldn't even be any other flavors. I disagree, but that's her feeling. And so we had these molds, um, the skeleton molds from Halloween. Well, when me and my mom were shopping on Tuesday, everything's like clear. It's like 75% off. And I found brain molds. <laughs> So I made skeletons and brains out of green jello. And I even stopped at the store and got another, um, the spray cans of um, whipped cream because she ate it all. <laughs> and I had it all ready for her and we had spaghetti dinner. And then her dad called and said that she needed to clean her room. So apparently my sweet little Miss Molly had a messy room and her aunt Stephanie and Uncle Lee were coming for the weekend and her room needed to be cleaned. So she had to go home. 
and she didn't get to stay overnight, and she didn't get to eat any green brains. But Val had some green brains, <laughs> and she loved them. <laughs> I know, it's so gross. And I have skeletons and brains still in the refrigerator. So Steve is still in Nebraska. He is bow hunting. I think when I talked to you guys last Sunday, he was leaving in the morning, and he was going to leave at like 2.30 in the morning. I said, oh, I should just stay up with him. Well, I did. <laughs> and sent him off on his merry way. And I haven't heard from him much because when we're gone someplace, like when I'm gone or when he's gone, we don't we don't have to talk to each other all day. <laughs> um, so I haven't talked to him at all, but he has texted me once in a while or Snapchatted me. And um, last I heard, he missed a buck. He said, I missed a buck. My arrow went two feet to the left. And I'm like, oh, good Lord. I knew the next thing that was coming out of his mouth in a text message was that he needed a new bow, and I was not wrong. That's what he said. I'm like, oh, good grief. They're so expensive. But um, I know that if he shot at the deer, I know that it was huge because he will not shoot at anything that is not huge when he's out in Nebraska because they have the biggest, like, big, big bucks, big bucks. So something was wrong with his bow. We're in Nebraska on the Platte River, and I don't know where else. <laughs> like, I don't know where he is. <laughs> All I know is that I am leaving on Wednesday evening to head down to Iowa to Dina's house. Oh, Peggy's husband got a buck in Oklahoma. Good for, good for him. Congratulations. Um, and I'm heading out Wednesday evening after I get done babysitting the kids. I'm headed to Iowa to, to meet Dina and Barb. Dina lives there, and Barb's flying in. Um, and we are going to pick Barb up from the airport. Now that makes me, reminds me that maybe I need to check with Dina and see when she's going to be home because she's, she's not home right now. Anyways, all these things are running through my head like, oh, I better check on that, right? I don't want to go there and stay overnight with Andy. Not that I don't like Andy. I do, but that's weird, right? I don't know if anybody would like that too much. Anyhow, Steve is going to be coming back from the, from Nebraska on Wednesday. So we're going to pass on the freeway. So I'll be watching for my brother's truck. <laughs> Wave really big. Say, hey, guys. I don't want to stop and visit with them because I'm sure they'll smell. Mm. I don't like smelly. Smelly doesn't work for me. Um. Anyways, so... Uh, yeah, so we couldn't get Molly, <laughs> squirrel, we couldn't get Molly Wednesday night, and I was going to have her stay overnight, and I was actually going to get up early, which I don't do, and take her to school, so darn it. Anyways, my mom went home early, um, Thursday morning, and then I had Stephanie's, Stephanie played with, we had live music for our pool party this summer, um, a friend of my stepdaughter Anna's, he does, goes around and does parties and and he plays at bars and so he came and played at our pool party and well my daughter Stephanie my stepdaughter Stephanie is in a band she is in the dwellers and Susan wants to know what we do with the dead deer we eat the dead deer it's venison and we like I grew up on it we have venison links for breakfast in the freezer which I made Saturday morning and Sunday morning no not Saturday morning anyways um where was I? Oh, gosh, now I can't remember. Darn it. Yeah, eat it. Somebody said eat it. Um, does anybody know where I was? <laughs> so embarrassing that my memory is so bad. Um, I'll think about it, and I'll get back to it. I wanted to give you guys a John report that, oh, yeah, my stepdaughter, Stephanie, she's the lead singer in a band, and she is fantastic, like, her voice is so rich, and I just love listening to her sing. So she sang with Adam at our party. And, yeah, Barbara says my daughter's band is amazing. It really is. She sang with Adam at our party because she's a singer, and he's like, get up here and sing. And they sang together like the whole party. And so he said, you are amazing. I want to do shows with you. So they're going to do about four shows a, a year. And Stephanie's still playing with her band called The Dwellers. They play down around the Fond du Lac area. And um, so they played Friday night at our Waverly Beach, which is a, a, a club about, I don't know, two or three miles from here. 
So that's what I did Friday night. That was really fun. And then Saturday morning, I had breakfast. My stepson, Stephen, and his wife and son were here. And they stayed overnight. And then Saturday, we went up to Tundra Lodge in Green Bay. It's an indoor water park because Stephanie's husband won a, ready for this, $5,000 gift card from Bass Pro Shops. And they own Tundra Lodge. So um, we went to Tundra Lodge and stayed overnight and played in the water and had a great time. The first thing that I did when I got there was I took Val up on the, you know, the climby, there's platforms and you go up some nets and another platform and then there's water that falls down and squirts and does all the things. We got up on the second platform and we went to come back down and it was like this netting stuff that you would climb up or climb down, I don't know, but I thought I could walk down it and I was wrong. I could not. So as I started walking down it, it's so squishy that it's hard to walk on and it was steep. So the momentum of being steep, I kind of went a little faster than I wanted to. And my pinky toe got caught in the netting and it like bent it back. So first thing I did, I'm gimping around the rest of the time. My pinky toe is completely purple. <laughs> I don't think I broke it, but I straight, I sprained it really bad. So that was ugh, icky. But we had a great time there. It was a great place for people watching. That was really fun. There were a lot of interesting people there. That's all I'm going to say. It was weird. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. So anyways, we had a blast. Dawson started not feeling well. And he was up every hour on the hour last night. Betty wants to know if I'm still doing lives on Facebook or just on YouTube. Just on YouTube now. Um, Facebook's platform keeps changing and they have messed around with me enough that I am really had it with Facebook. So I will still post everything on Facebook because I know that's where you guys find stuff, right? But um, as of this time right now, my Sundays, I'll be doing YouTube live. So just so you know, and Ginny wants a John update. So John took down all his Halloween decorations. And I have to tell you, it was very impressive because mine are not down and probably won't be until after Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <sighs> I just don't have time, but his are all gone. I saw John was gone for a couple days this last week. So Suzanne says YouTube is much easier to get in and she likes it better. I've heard people say that the picture is clearer too, so. Yeah, yeah, Betty, you'll find me here. So you're welcome. Um, but John was gone for a couple days this week. His truck was gone. I don't know where he went. Steve is gone. So I'm not getting any, you know, Steve talks to him once in a while. I don't really talk to him. I never see him. Um, and then I saw his wife left the other day, but he's back. All his Halloween decorations are down. I can say that his lawn is the only lawn that has the leaves raked, probably in our area here, like in five, four or five houses across the street in here. So, yeah. How many of you are going to Indianapolis for on stage? Hi, Priscilla. I want to know who's going to Indy. We've got on stage, um, which is a conference this weekend. I want to say, when is it? It's this weekend. All over the world. All over. Kathy Larson is going to be at Indy. Yay! Um, Kim is Kansas. Margaret is going, Sherry is going, Randy is going, Debbie, nope, uh, I see, did I just see Terry Sampson come in here? Linda will be at Indy, yay, there's going to be a lot of people, oh, Darlene's going to Pittsburgh, um, Sherry can't wait to see me, she's coming to Indy, we've got Vancouver, British Columbia, Esther wants to know who John is. Marcy's going to Anaheim. I know Priscilla's going to Anaheim. And um, Janice is only two hours away from Indy, but she's not going. Darn it. Uh, Inky, I think that's how you say your name. She's going to Geneva. I could have gone to Geneva. Stampin' Up! would have paid my way there. No. Is that where the big one is at? So we have a big conference, and then we have a bunch of smaller conferences. Cynthia is going to be on a trip to Myrtle Beach. Good for you. I'm jealous. It's been, it was really warm here last week, but then we had big storms and lots of rain. I noticed my power went out while I was gone. Um, we had flooding in Menasha. Bev is going to Arlington. Hi, Sharon. 
Yeah, so um, Stampin' Up! has conferences all over the world this coming weekend. Uh, not Geneva. Vienna. Yes, thank you. Vienna. Stampin' Up! would have flown me. I could go to any conference in the world that I wanted to go to. Or maybe it was only, maybe it was only, where did you say it was at? Vienna. Maybe that was it. But anyway, Stampin' Up! would have paid for that as, as um, part of my reward for hitting my million dollars in sales. So, okay, Linda wants my sausage wraps recipe. Linda, we don't make it. We, um, we pay somebody else too. So I'm sorry, I have no recipe, but it's really, really good. And their breakfast links, love them. Yes, um, thank you, Debbie, for saying John has been a feature of a stamp above since COVID started. So I'll tell you guys the story because I'm sure there's lots of you that don't know. John is our next door neighbor. Him and his wife live next door. We really, I don't really know him. We've lived here for 20 some years and they're very like stay in their house. They don't really talk. They're not like the most outgoing people. So when COVID started, we were locked in our houses. We had nothing to do. And Steve came upstairs one time. He... He, he knows when my door is closed that I'm probably shooting a video so he doesn't come in, right? But my door was closed. He kind of stood at the door, I think, and listened, didn't hear me talking to myself, which is a little weird, but I do it all the time. And especially when I'm shooting a video, right? He opened the door up and he said something like, John got a new lawnmower. And ever since then, I just busted out laughing because that was big news because we had nothing else going on. There was like nothing happening. We were locked in our houses. And so then all the time he would give me the John report and he would tell me what's going on with John. And so I told everybody about that. And ever since then, every week I do a John report and I let you know what's happening with my neighbor, John. He has no idea how a very, um, I don't want to say popular, like he's like a movie star, right? <laughs> he has no idea. He has no idea that we talk about him, but it's all in good fun. And I don't ever say anything that's like sketchy or anything like that we just kind of giggle about it and we talk about John and his cult following Polly says yes he has no idea he has John is a rock star exactly he has no clue so I'm sure he would probably be mortified if he knew I was talking about him every week but it's just funny so that's that's who John is um I told you our Packers lost today please make sure that you click on that thumbs up button because that really helps me out in all of the interweb analytics. I don't understand them, but I know it does. Leave a comment if you're new to me because when you leave a comment, you get entered in a drawing to win fabulous prizes. And also make sure you share my video. There's a button on your screen someplace where you can share. And let me show you. Oh, hang on. Um, Where's my share button? Did it just go? Oh, right Right here is a share button. I want to make sure. This is my iPad. There's a share button right there. So you can click on share and share my video. That really helps me grow my business and I appreciate it. Oh, and Deborah's going to Indy too. I know I missed a bunch of your messages going through there. Um, yeah, so super fun. Um, we're really looking forward to India. India. Indy, Indianapolis. Dina Barb, we're not going to India. <laughs> Dina Barb and I are headed down on Friday. I'm going to Dina's house. Maybe I'm thinking about it now, maybe Thursday morning, which would probably be better. Um, but I'm going to Dina's house and Barb is flying in from Wyoming. We're picking her up in Moline, right? Yes, I think that's what I have on my list. And then Friday morning, we're headed down to Indianapolis, which I don't think is very far from Dina's house. And we're going to be there until Sunday. And then on Sunday, we're coming back and we're staying at Dina's house until Wednesday morning is when I'll probably leave. I think Barb flies out at 7 a.m. and I'll probably take her to the airport and then head home because then I have to babysit the babies on Wednesday afternoon. Um... Jean says if she was John and she was watching, she wouldn't comment. Uh, I'm pretty sure John's not even on Facebook, so he has no idea. <laughs> yeah, so who is Tyrion Cox, you guys? Oh, thank you. Somebody retracted the message. That's good. You guys want to watch that? Priscilla, can you watch that? Because I'm not quite sure. And I don't want to see the, say the T-R-O-L-L -L word because somebody told me that when you say that, 
it pops up and more of them will come in. So we don't want. Where are you all staying in Indianapolis? Um, Sherry, I have no idea. <laughs> That's how I roll. Barb knows the things. I don't keep track of the things. Dina doesn't know, probably know. We'll figure it out when we get in the car. Um, it's in my messages because I didn't actually book my hotel. I booked through um, one of my team members. She had a block of room. So I don't know where we're staying. It's not in Indianapolis because, man, that was so, like, so expensive. Somebody asked where Dina is in Iowa. She lives in Bettendorf. And Polly, I'm glad you're catching me live. She didn't realize, uh, didn't realize until today that yesterday was Saturday. Oh, don't I do that? Yeah, I do the same thing. I get my days mixed up. So um, anyways, that's my schedule this week. So I have a lot, a lot of work. Yeah, Barb, Jackie says Barb seems to be the mom of us. She is the, um, what did we call her? The chaos controller, Barb and Dean, or me and Dina are chaos, and Barb has things under control. So we make a good team of three. <laughs> yeah, Barb's usually real organized, and she knows what's going on. And me and Dina are kind of like, oh, we don't care. <laughs> yes, Debbie says Barb takes care of the details. She just knows things, and we love that. <laughs> if you guys saw us travel together, you would be like, oh, my good Lord. <laughs> it's pretty amusing. My daughter... Well, I'm kind of the same way. When I travel with other people, I'm like, what time or what gate are we at? What's happening? Where do we need to be? I just kind of am lost in space. And my daughter finds it just shocking that I can travel by myself. But you know, when you travel by yourself, you got to get all your eggs in a row. You got to know what's going on. When you're traveling with other people and you know that they're the kind of people that always know what's happening, you just don't have to pay attention. Everyone needs a Barb in their life. I know, Barbara. We're so grateful for Barb. I can't even tell you. So um, that's what's happening in my little life here. Um, we are going to do prizes. I'm going to, let's see. Oh, I need to tell you guys another thing. So this week while Steve was gone, um, I, I've been, you know, getting the mail, right? He usually gets the mail. So there's a lot of things that I've had to do this week. Uh, excuse me, like I had to make my own burger today too. I know. <laughs> I'm quite capable, quite capable. But um, Steve got a letter in the mail. And this letter was from, I have to read this because it's so much, the Department of Justice, Law Enforcement. I can't read my own writing. Um, Law Enforcement Service of Criminal Information Bureau or something like Law Enforcement Services Criminal Information Bureau. And I sent him a picture of that return address that I read on this. I'm like, whoa, what the heck is going on? I sent him a picture of that and I, I said under it, I said, is there something you need to tell me? <laughs> and he sent me a message and said, open that, I'm curious. <laughs> So I opened it up and it was just a um, letter to let him know he had to renew a permit that he has. <laughs> that was so funny. But yeah, I'm like, is there something you need to tell me? Because I thought that it might be um, uh, jury duty, but the Department of Justice Law Enforcement serve, I can't even read my uh, Criminal Information Bureau, like that's a little sketchy. So, Vienna was not hard to pass up. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I just, I don't know. I don't know anything about Vienna. It's not on my bucket list. And traveling overseas, while I love to travel, gosh darn, it's such a long flight. Like, ugh. And I thought about that. You know, we've been to some very fancy tropical places like Fiji and, um, uh, where's Phuket? Where's that at? Uh, the country. To, uh, Thailand and we went to Italy Spain France we've been to all the Greece we've been to all the places and you know I love tropical vacations so if it were up to me I just go to Mexico that's only a few hours from here it's not like this huge jump the pond flight right <laughs> oh my gosh your husband gets jury duty all the time I had to do jury duty once for a drug driver that's an interesting story, too, for another time. Okay, um, so I had to tell you about Steve's um, letter from the whatever. And 
Um, the other thing was Dawson was up every hour on the hour crying because he started not feeling well all night long. And um, I woke up every time he was awake, but I just laid there. I'm like, I'm not, this is, it's okay. You know, I, I don't care. Steve would have been like, oh my gosh. But me, I'm like, whatever, babies get sick. You gotta, you know, just be patient. When I woke up one time, I'm laying in the bed like this. I get to sleep with Val. I'm laying in the bed like this, and Val is over here with her head going down that way. I thought she was going to go right over the edge into the crack by the wall. My granny's spidey senses must have made me take a look at her. And I just pulled her back over and tucked her under my arm where she loves to sleep. So it was pretty funny. But I think that was it. Thank you guys for your patience. With my blog being down last week, oh my good Lord, we have never had an outage that long before. I, um, I, my blog is through TypePad, which is a, which is a platform that we pay for. And then they take care of all of the behind the scenes maintenance to keep it relevant with all the changes in the interweb world. I mean, I don't know what, it, they do a lot of stuff, but whatever. Um, I don't care. I just need it to work, right? And um, it was out from Friday. It started getting sketchy. And I could get in and post a picture to my blog post. I was like designing my blog post. I could maybe post a picture, but then I'd go to type and it would like lock up. Or I'd try to put a picture in and only half the picture would show up and the rest of it was It was just a nightmare. So I'd go in there every once in a while to test it and I could get maybe one or two things done, but I could never get my full blog post done. So that was a long time to be out. And I am switching my blog to a different provider. I'm going with Integrant, I think it's called. Um, they're a, a blog provider for a lot of Stampin' Up! demonstrators. So, oh, and then I wanted to tell you guys too, but that won't happen till March. So, um, don't forget to vote on Tuesday. Get out there and vote. It is your duty as an American citizen. I fully believe in that. Even if you don't like people, <laughs> you should still vote. And if you don't vote, you don't have a right to complain. And that's just my opinion. Everybody's entitled to theirs. But that's my opinion. If you complain about everything that's happening in our country and you don't go vote, zip it. <laughs> I'm not kidding, but... I don't have a right to tell you that, but you know what I'm saying, right? I, I know some people that said they're not going to vote, but yet they complain and, and whine about everything under the sun. And it's like, if you didn't vote, you need to zip it. Like, yeah, Connie says, go vote, Esther, go vote. I will be voting on Tuesday. Steve voted before he left. Nancy gives me an amen, sister. Yeah. So go vote. It, it's, it's, we need to do it, right? <laughs> that's all we're going to say about that. We're not going to get into any other details about your voting, but you just need to vote. Everybody needs to have a voice. Okay. Polly voted. Yeah. Woohoo. Um, absentee vote for Judy, Jody. Yeah. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you very much. Yes. Vote, vote, vote. All right. Prizes. Hang tight. Oh, grabbing prizes. All right. There are, hang on, I gotta pull my chair back. I know I get like really close to you, I'm sorry. My chair slips out from under my butt all the, all the time. Who said eat it? <laughs> um, so there are three ways that you can win prizes from me. And the first way is to comment. And when you comment, you will get entered in a drawing for the fabulous prizes. And first off, we have, let me put this back in here. We have some iridescent rhinestone basic jewels. You guys know this is my favorite, favorite new embellishment. I love these. And I also have a pack of this was celebration paper. I don't know what it was called because I it's cut off. This is a quarter pack of celebration paper. Oops, let me do a little fan here. Oh, let's do it this way. Here we go. Boom, so pretty. It was the daffodil paper. I don't know what it was called, but anyways. This is going out to Kathleen Kershaw for commenting on my last YouTube live. So thank you so much, Catherine, for your sweet comment. And I am going to tuck this back in here so that I don't, I got to send it over there so it doesn't get lost in the mess we're about to make. Next up, we have a share. So when you share... Um, on here, you want to put shared, and then I will know that you shared. 
share on YouTube. Or if you share my, I'm going to be live in a few minutes, or I'm going to be live tonight on Facebook, you also get entered in that drawing. So all the sharing gets entered. And this from last week, I have the um, gingham embossing folder. Woohoo! And this was donated to me by Cheryl Lowry. And Cheryl said that she accidentally ordered it twice and she wanted me to give it away to someone. So thank you so much, Cheryl. So appreciated. Somebody's going to love this. And then I also have, oh, Daffodil Afternoon. That's what it was called. Daffodil Afternoon. Um, I've got the designer series paper, quarter pack of that to go with the embossing folder to Bonnie Braden. Bonnie is in Borgersville, Indiana. So Bonnie. Oh, let me take this note off the back. That Cheryl gave that to me. You have some happy mail coming your way for sharing last time. And next, the third way that you can win fabulous prizes from me is by placing an order. So everybody who placed an order in the last week gets entered into a drawing. And I have the perfect pomegranate stamp set. This was a host exclusive stamp set in our last mini catalog. Beautiful images. I also have a half a pack of the afternoon uh, Daffodil Afternoon um, Designer Series paper to go with that. That is going to Sandy Heisen of Sacramento, California. Sandy and everybody who ordered last week, thank you so much for your orders. Those orders keep me in business and pay my bills. So... Um, I yelled at Steve last week. We have some property up north, and it's just got a garage on it and our camper and my outhouse, which I love. I think that's really important. <laughs> I don't love the outhouse, but I love the fact that we have one. Um, and there's electric there, so I get an electric bill every month. and We can shut it off when we're not using it, but it's around $31 a month, right? And um, the last bill that I just got last week was... $51. And Steve has been there working a lot. And so he's got power tools going and the stereo and the TV and, you know, whatever. And the power washer, he power washed the camper and all the buildings. And um, I sent him a picture of that bill while he was out in Nebraska. And I said, you are out of control. <laughs> so I think he got a big kick out of that. Anyways, we are ready to start stamping. The first thing that I'm going to be showing you tonight is a technique card. This is part of, hang on, I gotta pull these cords around. Things are falling. Um, this is part of my technique club. So I have, hang on you guys, things are getting weird. Um, I have a technique club and everybody who's in the technique club places a minimum $25 order or more, more is always good. And uh, um, I, I send you a card and an instruction card each month with a new technique on it. So after a while, you would get a bunch of instruction cards with the technique on it that you can make up a little binder or somehow save them. And you'll have all these cool techniques, the instructions to do them, um, what the technique looks like, and also a, a date of the video that I did it on. And so um, this was my technique card for October. And I'm going to share that with you tonight. And I see so many nice comments coming in. Betty said, congratulations on your um, achievements. I completely forgot to say anything about that, you guys. Thank you all so much for um, all of your congratulations. We had, on November 1st, Stampin' Up! had videos come out that um, told where we ranked in our company. And let me see, I'll get my rankings. I always put them up on a board so I know what I did last year. <clears throat> this year, I was number 20 in sales. And this is out of, there's between 40, I think maybe around 40,000 in the US, 55,000 maybe um, demonstrators worldwide. I don't know. It's always kind of like, uh, who knows? But somewhere's around there. Um, I ranked number 20 in sales. I ranked number nine in team building, number three in leadership, and number 11 in overall or demonstrator of the year. Ah! Wow, right? Super, super fun. Yeah, so that was really exciting. Um, I honestly did not expect to do that well this year because I've kind of been spending a lot of time with the grandbabies. I've been taking a little bit more time off. 
And um, so that really surprised me. I was just so pleasantly surprised. And I want to thank all of you guys because you contribute to that. And um, whether it's watching me or um, ordering my kits or my online classes or being part of my technique club or placing orders with me, all of it counts towards these fantastic achievements. So thank you. Thank you so much. I just, I was like, whoa, I did really good. Um, I was down just a little bit in three categories from last year, but I was actually did better in leadership. So last year I was number four in leadership. This year I was three. Who can complain, right? I'm not complaining. I was like, whoa, <laughs> that was really exciting. Okay, somebody asked where my camper is. My camper is by Hatfield, which is by Black River Falls in central Wisconsin. There you go. All right, we're ready to flip this camera around. It is time. Okay, hang tight while I do the things. Here we go. Now, if we get disconnected, hang on, I got to move my lights around. If we get disconnected, please just, there's a backup link where you came in to find this link. Just go to my YouTube channel and you'll find it if something happens and we get disconnected. BJ, thank you so much. I am very proud of myself. Um, you know what? When you want something, you work hard for it. And, you know, most of the time, good things will happen. And I'm just one of those people that I, I enjoy my work so much. I love my job. And so um, to be able to be recognized, plus I work for a, an amazing company. I have an amazing team of demonstrators under me. I couldn't do this without them. Um, oh, Priscilla, thank you so much. Um, so just know that it takes a village to do what I'm doing. And um, I have some helpers that help me out. Like I said, my team is just incredibly important to me. And when I say team, I mean everybody. Some people say, well, I'm just a discount shopper. You're not just anything. You are part of my team, whether you are buying your product at a discount or selling product. Everybody is part of my team and they're all important. And I just appreciate them so much. So Thank you so much. <laughs> Tina said she was thinking about Val's little meltdown and one of her daughters was the same. The thing that worked best for her was to get a video camera, <gasps> show my age out and she straightened up. Oh, that's very interesting. I think we might do, oh, that's a good one. Thank you for sharing that. Tina, that's awesome. Yeah, we didn't have any problems with Val today. We dropped her off and she did not pitch a fit that I was leaving. And you know, it just, <laughs> it warms my heart that she loves me so much, but that's really getting old. Like she like goes in full on ballistic, but um, she was just so good this weekend. So, <laughs> and we love her, of course. And I said to Haley today, I said, I love that she's so feisty. I love that about her. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Okay, Fond of Autumn. Oh, this is a beautiful, beautiful bundle. And it has, um, it has dies that, hang on, let me get this out. I've used this before. It has dies that cut out all the details of this. And also, so it cuts out in between all of these. This goes on here, well, something like that. And then it also does an outline. It cuts out the outline. We have this, which is our banner. So we've got words, words that go with the banner. I love the font on the Autumn Wishes. We have some flowers. You can also take this and cut it, die cut it all apart. So you have separate elements. You have some flowers, you have some leaves, you have these little berry things over here. And, you know, just some really cool, cool images. And then we've got, um, we've got dies for all three of these also. So we're going to be using this. I'm also bringing in the leaf. Oh, I think this is just called Leaf 3D. Uh, what is this called, you guys? Leaf 3D folder or something. It was just so plain. I was surprised. But we're going to be using this leaf folder. This is also in the mini catalog. And um, let me put these dies away so I don't lose anything. I'm trying to keep up with your message. Leaf Fall 3D folder. Yes, thank you. I think that's what it's called. Oh, we're going to use this one. So let's bring that back out. Leaf Fall. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, it was some real kind of strange, right? Just kind of a weird name. We're also going to be using um, Memento Black and Rich Razzleberry ink. And we're going to be pulling in some Crushed Curry, Cajun Craze, Rich Razzleberry, and Old Olive ink refills. 
Uh, and we're going to use the pearls. These are the festive pearls, and I wanted to open these up so I could show them to you. In the package, they just look like, eh, whatever. But they're really very pretty. Here we go. They have red, a very pale green, which is beautiful, silver, and gold. So these are called festive pearls. Um, they're also called red and green pearls. I don't know. They're, they had two different names on the packages. I don't know why. But if you go to the online store and look up pearls, you're going to find pearls. Oh, which reminds me. This is my current host code right now. And um, this is my blog. You can find my shopping link on there. And if your order is under $150, please use this code. Um, this really helps me out. It lets me buy the door prizes for everybody and so on and so forth. If your order is over $150, don't use this code. Stampin' is, Stampin Up! is going to give you some rewards, and I definitely want you to have them. Hang on while I push this back just a little bit because it's kind of out here a long ways, and I don't need it out there, and you're going to jiggle a little bit. Okay, oops, that's not straight. Hang on. Oh, good grief. I hope that looks better. <laughs> Anyways, I'm delayed on the screen, so I can't see what's going on. All right, let me um, set these aside. Okay, we're also going to be using baby wipes, and I really like Huggies Natural Care. Um, first of all, this is what we use for the kids, and I've been using these for longer than the kids, um, but they don't have put a lot of lint on your stamps if you use them to clean your stamps, so I really like these. So we're going to get out our layers. And I'm going to bring in my basic white layer. This layer is three and three, no, three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And that brings me to another thing. Um, there will be a free download, a PDF file that you can download and print this out. It'll have pictures of the project. It'll have instructions, dimensions, all of the supplies, colors, the names of everything that I used. And you'll be able to print it out or save it to your device but it takes me a little bit to get that done on my blog. So you gotta give me, the link is under this video in the description. Um, if you're looking at an iPad right now, it, it says live stamping class 11622, and then it says Kelly Atchison, a stamp above, and then it says more. When you click on that more, there's a whole bunch of stuff that comes in. There's a link to my blog post there, and you will be able to find those downloads on my blog. Okay, we've got an envelope. We've got a basic white layer for the inside, four by five and a quarter. And then we have um, a piece of rich razzleberry that's four by five and a quarter, same size. Crushed curry, and this piece is three and a quarter by four and a quarter, same as the white, which is weird, but you're gonna love this. And then we have a scrap. Do we have a scrap of white? I don't know why we have that. Yeah, I don't know what that's for. Okay, it shouldn't be in here. We're gonna do our technique first so that it has time to dry. So what I'm gonna do here is I am going to take, oh, hang on, let's see what happened, there we go. I am going to take my baby wipe, okay? This is opened up and we're gonna fold it twice. So you're gonna fold it once like that and once like this. Now, one thing that I did when I was doing this the other day is I brought in a little ruler and I'm just gonna use that ruler. So I'm actually gonna fold it a third time. So let's do that again. We folded it in half. I'm gonna fold it this way and then I'm gonna fold it again. And I'm gonna put this ruler in here because this is gonna give me a nice firm edge rather than trying to hold this with my fingers and keep it flat. And you'll see why in just a second. So we're gonna start with the um, la 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 Cajun craze. And I'm going to just put a little bit of re inker right there. And then we're going to go with old olive. And oh, yucky, yucky, yucky. Let's see if I can get that wiped off. Okay. We're going to do a little old olive just like that. I'll set that over there. Then we're going to bring in our crushed curry. And again, this is called the baby wipe swipe. Do that. I'm going to do that. And then rich razzleberry. I'm trying to keep the lids by the right color. <laughs> we'll see how well that goes. Rich razzleberry. Okay. Oh, 
well, that's kind of wide. Well, mine's just going to look different. Okay, now I've got that pulled. I just kind of pulled it down a little bit. And now it's on my um, ruler. So I'm going to take it. You're going to start a little bit. I'm going to hold on to my paper here. You could tape it down if you wanted to. I'm going to start a little bit off the paper. And I'm just going to swipe it across. And now I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to start where I left off. That's our baby wipe swipe. And you're like, oh, that's pretty, right? But what are you going to do with it, Kelly? Well, let's grab another piece as long as we're here because I have a few of them laying here. Why not? Um, I'm going to pull this up here. Get your ruler out of your way because that kind of got in the way of my hands. And now I'm going to pull it down here. Now we've got it and it's just a little bit lighter, right? Okay. So let's try, I've got one more, I've got another piece of paper here, we'll keep going. And I'm gonna pull this back up here. Now you could just use your hands if you wanted to, but I thought it would be hard to keep that flat with just your fingers, right? My fingers don't span that whole thing, that's why I'm using a ruler. And pull this down again. Now it's really light. There we go. Let's try that again. I'm gonna move it just a little bit. I'm just gonna go over what I did. Oh yeah, that works. How about that? There, ha, that worked good. Okay, I'm gonna toss this in the garbage. My fingers, other than getting the re-inker on from my, um, my re-inker are pretty clean. So the ruler thing works really good. And I'm thinking maybe we might want to just wipe this off. I don't know if it's going to have ink on it or not, but I don't want to get it on my next project, and it actually didn't. So I'm going to put this back in here. Somebody asked me last week, why did you put that baby wipe back in there after you wipe your fingers off? Because it keeps it moist, and it's not really that dirty, so I'll use it again. I'm cheap. <laughs> I'm not really that cheap, but I don't know. It just seems senseless to leave it sit out here, and it'll dry up, and then I'll throw it away. So I just put it back in there and use it again. Let me get this these little messy things cleaned up. Okay, now, where did my bin go for this? Hang on, you guys, I gotta grab a bin. I'm gonna put these in a bin so when I type up my project sheet, I will know what's going on. All right, we're gonna set these aside. We're gonna let them dry. And now we're gonna do some other things with our, um, oh, you're gonna need a scrap of, crumb cake too. Oh, this is my card base. I'm sorry. Our card base is crumb cake. You will need a scrap. I don't know what I didn't have a scrap. So let me grab one. Scrap of crumb cake. And here we go. I know that's kind of excessive, but whatever. <laughs> All right. Hang on while I change my glasses too, because these glasses are only for reading your messages and now I can see them fine. <laughs> it's weird. Okay, crumb cake card base. This is five and a half by eight and a half. And we are going to burnish this edge good. Yeah, it really is a cool thing, isn't it? It's a really neat look. You know, I can see using this on um, with some really bright colors and stamping a big sentiment on it or anything like that. It's just a neat, neat technique. Oops, let me grab another one of these. We don't want to look at that mess I made there. Okay, so we're going to stamp this. And... Hang on a second. There we go. We're going to stamp this with the sentiment that says sending many thanks. We're just going to, oops, let me get that inked up good. We're going to stamp that right here. And then we're going to use this banner die. Fits right on here. It's like so perfect. And I like to use some temporary tape and I'll just tape that down and we're gonna run it through our die cutting machine and voila. Okay, next we're gonna take our Rich Razzleberry ink and we're gonna grab the four by five and a quarter inch whoops, layer that we're gonna do on the inside. And we are going to stamp Autumn Wishes. Just like that. I just thought that would look neat. It's a little different being down in the corner, right? 
And I'm thinking that while we're doing that, we should do our envelope. And I think what I'm going to do to the envelope is I'm just going to stamp this. I'm going to stamp this over here on my envelope. And I'm just going to kind of do this. Whoa, isn't that pretty? Very pretty. Now we need to clean this. This is my chamois. And Polly says autocorrect hates her. <laughs> I did not see. I shafted saving my words like that since you said that. It's okay. I started. I know it's supposed to say you started. Did I get that clean? I don't think I did. Oh, maybe the re red usually stains. So, yeah, I did get it clean. I'm like, what happened here? I'll clean this as long as I'm here. And then, well, Kelly, let's clean them all. There we go. Um, now I'm going to grab my black ink and we're going to grab our baby wipe swipe and I'm going to ink this up. Now we have such a big stamp here and a smaller ink pad. So I like to kind of see what's going on and I do this. I never did adjust my lights, you guys. So let me see if I can do that. Um, and now we're going to take this and we're just going to stamp it right on here. Yeah, so, you know, everybody thinks that these line images, if you're not a big color, it's like, oh, that's a lot of coloring. Look at it. You don't have to color a thing. This makes it so easy. You just use some type of a background technique instead of coloring, and it'll work out fine. And you can do a lot of different things with backgrounds, right? So um, always keep that in mind when you see a stamp set that is line images and you're not a big fan of line images because you're not a big fan of coloring, that you can always use them to do other things. I'm gonna set this aside and just put mini dimensionals on there. And we will get the stamp cleaned again. And we're done with that. Put this back in here. And now we're gonna assemble our card. So here is our inside. Oh, we need to emboss this layer in our Leaf Fall 3D folder. So I just took mine and I put it right in here where I would get the most leaves, okay? So we're gonna run this through. And then once we do that, it's going to look like this. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I just love, love, love this for fall. Okay, and I think I'm gonna put this like this. We're gonna put our inside somewhere. So if I find my glue, there it is. Inside, oh, I almost dropped it. Don't you hate it when you do that? I have a funny story to tell you guys when we get to one of the cards tonight and you guys can try and guess how many times I screwed up before I finally got it right. It was so ridiculous. Okay, and then we're gonna come in here with the rich razzleberry. I love that color for fall. Come in with that right here. Okay, and then we're gonna take, oh, I need, I need black. Gosh, I'm glad that you guys are gonna get a downloadable PDF because apparently I thought I had all my pieces in here, but I did not. We need a black piece that's four and a quarter by three and a quarter. Let's see if this is big enough. Okay. Well, that cut off just a teeny weeny little sliver. Four and a quarter by three and a quarter, basic black. We're gonna mount that under this because that's gonna make it just pop like crazy. And we use black ink on here, so that kind of pulls it together. Oh, I'm so silly. Hang on. Good grief. Let's see if I can do this right. Our, um, this layer needs to be four and three eighths. 
by three and three eighths. Sorry about that. I was looking at the basic white thinking it was black. So one, two, three, three and three eighths by four and three eighths. Now we can glue it together. And you're gonna get just a tiny little margin. <laughs> Did you see me just flick that? Yes. Isn't that pretty? <gasps> yeah. Okay, now we're gonna take this piece and we're gonna offset it just a little bit. And I really like the way this looks. So we're gonna offset it. So it's just got a little bit coming out of each side there. See what I did? <laughs> Look at my hand. Yeah. And then we're gonna put this on the front of our card. And I'm just gonna look at this layer and get that layer on here straight. The rest of it, don't pay attention to the crushed curry. But, oh, isn't that cool? And here comes our little sentiment. We're gonna put that right in the middle, like that. Last but not least, let me find my little pearls. I had some cut and in my bag and now they are gone. <laughs> of course, of course they are. Oh, they're on the floor. Do you guys do that when you're stamping, like you're stamping along and everything ends up on the floor because you kind of pull it off with your sleeve? I do that so much. All right, so now we are going to add our pearls. And I just love gold with these rich colors. I just think that's the right color to choose. But of course you could choose anything you want. <gasps> Look at how pretty that is. Good grief, that's gorgeous, right? Simple, easy. I can make two more cards now. Got all the things ready to roll. So you saw that you could make, you know, and you could just re-ink your, um, your piece of baby wipe. You can just re-ink that and keep going with it. All right, guys, I am looking for, here it is. I was looking for my die because I knew that I didn't get that back in there. Holy moly, we don't want that. Okay, and then this is the instruction sheet. So each month, um, my Technique Club members will get the card and also an instruction sheet that has the date of my video, which is today, and a little snippet of the sample on there for that particular card. So that's how the Technique Club works. You place a minimum $25 order each month. And I have a lot of people that ask me questions like, I'm a demonstrator, so can I still join your club? Yep, you can. You would place your order through me. Um, I'm on your team and, or I want to join your team. And if I do that, can I still be in the technique club? Yep. You're going to place one order with me to stay in that technique club and the rest of your orders you're going to place through yourself to get your discount. So anybody can be in this club as long as you're in the United States. All right. I'm going to set those aside. We, and again, this was the Fond of Autumn bundle and then the Leaf fall 3D embossing folder. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, let me set these over here. I'll bring those back out at the end so we can, you know, kind of look at things again. Um, let me get all these things put away. And there's another one. I wanted to bring these in here. So um, you guys remember this from last week. If you missed my live last week, this is what we made. We made a beautiful, beautiful card using the fitting florets. This is a new collection that is available in November. It just started November 1st. Let me grab the form here. And it has a stamp set and dies. It has an additional stamp set, some new gold swirls, and the fitting florets designer series paper. This is available starting November 1st until January 4th or while supplies last. So the stamp set and the dies are gonna continue to be available in our new spring mini catalog. The rest of these items are gonna be gone, um, either 
while supplies last or January 4th, just so you know. So I made this cute little gift bag and this beautiful card. And I also made this card that I love this layout because it features the designer series paper on the front and then the inside also. So I love doing that. And then this was another one of my cards that we made last Sunday with the Sweet Candy Cane bundle. Super cute. I used the ovals from the Fitting Florets bundle on here for this layer right here. So I just wanted to share those with you again. And we are ready for our next card. Oh, here's the dies. Oh, love this bundle. Absolutely love them. Here is the designer series paper. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And next up, we are going to be making a card with the Brood For You bundle. Who has this bundle? This I knew I had to have because, well, Wisconsin. <laughs> we are known for our... Um, among other things, we're a very beautiful state, but we are known for our beverage consumption in the alcoholic nature. Not alcoholics, but in the alcohol nature. So we do a lot of, we have a lot of breweries here. We have, we do have um, wineries here. Lots of things centered around um, alcohol. Here's a funny little piece of trivia for you. My hometown is Nielsville, Wisconsin, which is directly in the middle of the state. And when I was a kid, you know, I graduated high school there, there were, our, our population I believe is 2,500 and there were 17 bars or taverns in Nilesville. <laughs> we take our beer seriously. So I'm gonna be using the perfectly penned designer series paper. I am also going to be using the essentials, the Baker's Twine Essential Pack. Now. This is my online kit class for November. It's featuring the brood for you. And ooh, I see Becky has it and Sandy has it. And Sarah loves the bundle. Who just said the dyes are to die for? Judy said that. Um, Delora has it. Tracy has it. Oh my gosh, so many of you have this. This is fabulous. Oh, Polly grew up in Warren's. I used to go to the Warren's um, Cranberry Festival. And she said there were 200 people is the population of Warren's and they had three bars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's normal. <laughs> we're going to be using, so included in my Brood for You online class is the Perfectly Penciled Designer Series paper, the Baker's Twine Essential Pack, the a half a pack of the brushed metallic dots, the Snowfall Accents puff paint, eight envelopes, and enough cardstock to make eight cards. There's gonna be four different designs. You get to make two of each. My kit is $52 with all of the goodies. And um, if you need the bundle, you can add that on for an additional $46. All of this includes tax and shipping. And I am taking pre-registration for this right now. This class will be available on um, the, the PDF will be available on, oh, I wrote the wrong date down. Hang on. Mm, uh, I can't tell you. Um, well, the kit's going to go out the week of the 27th. I don't know what date the um, PDF is going to be available because I still have my October date and that's not right. So anyways, but it will be available. You guys know me. I'm pretty good about that. I'm not pretty good. I'm really good about that. It really makes me crazy if I don't meet my deadlines. So just know that. So we are going to be making a really fun, fun fold. Plus it's a gift card holder. And I just feel like this time of year, especially we need gift card holders ideas, right? And you can use them for any occasion. We're going to make a birthday card but you can turn this card into a Christmas card. You can turn it into any kind of card you want. This is the Stripes and Splatters 3D embossing folders. You get both of these in here, and I have little samples that I made. This is the Stripes, which is a really neat look, and this is the Splatters, and I hope you guys can see that. We're gonna be using the Splatters today. 
So let me put this back. Oh, let's leave that out. How about that, Kelly? I am also going to be using some circles. Now I've got the stylish shapes and this is, I believe, yep, the largest circle from the stylish shapes. If you don't have that, this one is approximately two in, uh, three inches, a three inch circle. And then I've got the circle, um, layering circle dies. This gives you the stitched edge. This gives you just a solid edge. And this one is two and five eighths circle. So we're gonna be using both of those. And again, all of this stuff will be on my blog with all the dimensions and all the things. We've got a cr um, crushed curry ink pad and also that memento black again. And let's get our cardstock layers out. We've got an old olive scrap. Let me put my little cheat sheet up there so I know what's going on. Uh, okay. Here we go. I've got my envelope. We're going to use a black card base, five and a half by eight and a half. I've got a scrap of black, and that's going to just cut out that big circle. And you can see the stitched edges on it. It just it looks so nice. And then we're going to use the other layering circle die to cut out a uh, Sahara sand circle. And then I've got um, a scrap of white, a white layer that's two and a quarter by five and a quarter. I've got a Sahara sand layer that is one and three quarters by five and a quarter. I've got a scrap of crushed curry. So these are all scraps, basic white, old olive crushed curry. And then I'm using that perfectly penciled designer series paper. I love black and white paper and you can do so many things with it, so many things. Um, this particular piece is one and a half by five and a quarter, two and a quarter by five and a quarter, okay? So let's do some things here. First things first, we are going to use a blending brush. Let me put these away. We're gonna use a blending brush and our crushed curry ink. I don't know what you guys do with your blending brushes, but I wash mine. And when I get done, I just run it under water and keep going like this until it's not running yellow anymore. And I squeeze the water out and I just set it like that on a paper towel. Um, I don't set it like that, although I don't think it would hurt anything. But if you guys have, don't have any of these, you get three in a package. And oh my gosh, they're the softest thing ever. They're like velvet. <gasps> so nice. Okay, we're gonna take both of these layers and this is why I love black and white paper because I can make this any color that I need it to be. I could make this blue, I could make this red, I can make it any color and I'm gonna make it crushed curry and black. And because it's such a um, busy pattern, you don't have to worry about starting off the paper and then getting on the paper. You can go directly to the paper. <laughs> because it just doesn't matter. What'd you guys have for supper tonight? I wanna know. I told you I had to cook myself. <laughs> Poor baby Kelly. I actually made spaghetti last week for um, when the kids came over. And so I kept some of the hamburger back and I made two hamburger patties. And so I cooked one of them tonight. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of a, um, I like to make my hamburgers, like I don't just make a hamburger, right? I toasted the buns, I made fried onions, I do all the things to make it spectacular. <laughs> and it was delicious. Yeah, really good. Okay, isn't this pretty? <gasps> Salad and pizza, popcorn and tea. Nancy, oh, did you eat any sour patches with your popcorn? Because I have to have those. A little weird, right? Hi, Sandra. So, Here's our beautiful, beautiful designer series paper. Now I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer again. Let's get all these bits and pieces off of there because we have a little bit of scoring to do. Let me set that over there. We're gonna take this black layer and we are going to score it at four and a quarter. Make sure I got that right. I'm just scoring it in half, right? 
I thought as long as we're scoring it another time, we might as well do that. So four and a quarter, and now one and three quarters. Okay. I'm gonna set that aside. And then we are going to take, we already die cut these, so we've got both of those. We're gonna take this piece and this piece and we're going to run them through the splatter folder. So this was our Sahara sand, one and three quarters by five and a quarter. We're gonna run that through and then we're gonna take our circle and we're gonna run that through. Okay. And let me get those out of my little goodie pack. I try to keep this clipping along for you guys because you know how to use an embossing machine. And if you don't, please stop me and let me know because I am happy to bring my machine in here and show you how to do it. Um, so here's the texture and I just think that's so cool, right? Okay, we've got that done. Now we're going to bring in our scraps. We need to do a little stamping on here and we're going to stamp uh, let's stamp the birthday. Oh, let's stamp that. I'm going to stamp the one that says I owe you one or several. This is a really, really neat stamp set. You get 13 different images in here. You've got a wine glass and then the wine. You've got a beer mug and then the beer. So it's two-step stamping. You don't have to color it. A beer glass with the beer or this can be root beer. It can be anything you want it to be. Then we have the sudsies and then the sentiments and the bottle. This is called something, but I can never remember what it is. Somebody will tell me. This is like the jug that root beer or beer comes in, right? I bought a jug of root beer like this one time. Root beer, root beer. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna take our sentiment with the black ink and we are going to stamp that. And then we're going to bring in those stylish shapes again. I'm telling you guys, if you don't have these, you need to get them. They're amazing. And we're gonna die cut that right in here with this tag banner. So you just use the tag banner that fits it the best. And I have already done that. Get all these bits and pieces out. So here we go with that. And then we are going to take our beers. I mean, our dyes. I got beer on the brain now. This is a barley, I think. That's what it's called. We're gonna take that and we're gonna die cut that. And then we're gonna die cut one of the leaf dies. We're gonna die cut that. We need to do a little stamping on here. Um. We're gonna stamp, oh, I need a, I need a scrap of soft suede too. Gosh, I must've just been, I was, I was trying to get all of this done, you guys, before I left to go to um, Tundra Lodge. So it's like, oh, I thought I was doing really good, but apparently I was mistaken. <laughs> I am going to use my black ink to stamp this jug. Uh, here we go. Oh, Audrey said she needs the, um, the stacking for these dies and embossing folders. So, okay, let me show you. I'm gonna show you how this works. So. For all of these little dies, you stack with the platform and the plate, and then they go in between these two clear plates, okay? For that embossing folder, which I have lost, here it is. This is a 3D folder. So you're going to take all of this off of here, all three of these off. You're gonna put your paper in here and you're gonna run it through with the uh, what is this platform called? Mm, I don't know, but it's an extra platform for the 3D folders, okay? Boom. Oh, it's a hop spud. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Um, so that's how you run this through. Now, if you had a regular thinner embossing folder, you would bring this platform in and you would put one plate on top. And I have to tell you that 
all of these stacking are right here. So you can just look, here's that big platform on the bottom, a cutting um, or the, the thin adapter, then a cutting plate and all your goodies and then another cutting plate. And that's for dies. Okay, and then here, um, la, 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 la. these are for the dies. Well, that's the same thing. Um, this is for an embossing folder and this is for a 3D embossing folder. So it tells you everything right on here, but I am always happy to show you too. I know sometimes this stuff gets a little confusing. But of course, if you're doing it 24 seven like I am, you just, you kind of take that for granted. So I'm glad that you stopped me, thank you. Okay, so this is a hops. It's not a wine glass, it's called a schooner beer glass. Really, I thought it was wine. Oh goodness, Margaret. <laughs> when do you use a precision plate? I, we don't have a precision plate. So, never. <laughs> yeah, sorry. No precision plate. Okay, here we go. Here comes our bottle. What is this bottle called? Somebody's gonna tell me. <laughs> Thanks, Connie. <laughs> okay. Um, here comes our hops. And you know I'll forget that the next time, right? <laughs> I really will. And here, oh, I already brought in our sentiment. Now we need to stamp our beer glass. So this is really cool. When I say that you don't have to color the beer glass, what is that thing called? It's a schooner? Good grief. That kind of throws my whole momentum off here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and then you've got the um, two-step stamping. So you've got your outline, and now you're going to come in, and you're going to stamp your beer in here. Look at I think I did pretty good. Oh, I did. I did really good. Okay, so we're going to do that. And then we also need, there's suds, and there's two different suds in here. There's a little suds for the glass, and there's a big suds for the mug, okay? A growler jug. Hang on, I need to write that down because I never remember that. So the one thing is a schooner growler jug. Okay, thank you guys so much. I'll never remember. Um, and then we're gonna do our, this is the smaller of the suds. So we're gonna do that, okay? I'm gonna close these up. Nope, we need to stamp the inside here yet too. Don't close up too soon, Kelly. All right, here comes our black bag. We're gonna stamp the, oh, ale, yes. I almost feel like a pirate when I'm saying that. <laughs> yeah. Here comes our, oh, ale, yes. And then we're going to also stamp, and I just put that beer down here. Oops, let me make sure I have this inked. I don't want to do all this and then mess it up. And here comes our beer. Oh, I just don't know if I can do this again. Oh, I did. Pretty good. Okay. I'm going to put this over to the side. Oh, the beer glass is called a Pilsner. This one is called a Pilsner? Good grief, I can't remember all this, you guys. Beer's beer. <laughs> I'm just kidding, thank you. <laughs> this is getting very technical. Um, Jared, my son-in-law, who's married to Haley, his mom and dad are huge um, craft beer people. Like, they take little vacations and go to places that have lots of breweries, you know, and go test them all out. Okay, so here's our glass of beer and here is our packing tape. You guys saw me do this with um, the Haunted House from the Scary Cute set. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it on the glass of beer, okay? This is a really cool technique that you can use with anything you want to make shiny. And, you know, dishes, glasses, bottles, all that kind of stuff. But don't forget about turtles and fish and seashells. So now this really looks like, it looks like you clear embossed it. Let me get a light in here. Can you see that? It looks like it's got clear embossing powder on the whole thing, but it's super easier than that. Okay, we're going to grab this die and we're gonna grab the little sudsy die. And we're gonna die, cut both of those. 
And you guys know that I had that done, except, oh, there it is on the floor. I pulled it off the, pulled it off my desk again with my sleeve. So there's those dies. Can you see that? Isn't this cool? Die cut it, or you can punch it. That works too. So now we've got all of our bits and pieces out here. The only thing that I want to do that is going to be an addition to our card is I want to take our envelope and I'm just going to put it in, whoops, I'm going to put the left side through this embossing folder and I just thought that would look really cool. So I'll bring this in and you can see exactly how I do this. I take all of my extra plates out. I put my folder in here and my whatever this is called. It's called something, but I can't remember right now. I would normally know it, but well, apparently today is not that normal of a day. <laughs> okay. And here comes our envelope. This is our envelope. We're gonna write our address over here. You can put a sticker or whatever over there, or you can stamp the back of the envelope with your return address or whatever you do. But isn't that cool? I just thought that was neat. It just came to me. Okay, whoops, everything's falling. So now we're gonna put this baby together. I'm looking at your uh, comments. Okay, this is our inside layer. We've got all these little dudes here. Here comes our hops. All right, let's do some things. Here we go. We're gonna fold this. This folds right in half, right? Because we already scored it at four and a quarter. And then we're going to fold this in. And we scored that at one and three quarters. We're gonna take this and we're gonna add that to our front, maybe. There we go. I got to sit in the hot tub today at Tundra Lodge for a little bit and I'm not really a big fan of hot tubs, but man, did that feel good. I'm like, oh, maybe it's just cause I'm getting old. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, so nice, warm, bubbly. I could have stayed in there for quite a while. Oops, I didn't get that very, I didn't get that lined up very good. Come on, you beast. I just wanted to pull it down a little bit. Okay, so now if you have a die or whatever you have, use whatever you have. I've got a one and a half inch circle punch here and I'm just gonna eyeball this in the center and I'm gonna punch out about that much. This is for a gift card holder, okay? So they can grab the gift card out of there. Now I'm gonna grab my tear and tape because I know that tear and tape or something stronger is gonna hold this flap down. So I choose to use that versus glue because that fold is always gonna be trying to pop back up to its original where it was, right? That's the grain of paper. Okay, so we're gonna get this and this off of here. Da -da -da. And that's gonna be our little pocket for our gift card. All right, now, here comes this layer and our white inside layer. I'm gonna put this layer on first. We're gonna put this right out here. I'm just looking at the right top and bottom for my um, placement. This is just gonna butt right up against it. Oops, I hate it when I catch my glue there. Let me wipe that on my pants. <laughs> I got home and I put the beach towels in. I didn't know if we needed them or not, so we took them. And their towels are really scratchy and crappy. I'm glad we had our own towels, they were yucky. As Val would say, my vocabulary is changing. <laughs> yeah. And I got my laundry done, so that was really cool. This is a good day. I was just killing it today. I'm doing pretty good tonight, too, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so 
this, oops, that's not very, that's not centered. Hang on, that didn't center for me. I was, I was yakking. I wasn't really paying that close of attention. That's better. Okay, so we're going to put that on there. I'm going to take some dimensionals. And let's grab the bigger ones. And I'm going to put, this is going to go right here, okay? So I'm just kind of, I put my fingers here so I know where to put my dimensionals. One there and one there. And then I'm going to put one on the back of the side. And we'll get those backings off. By the way, this is a take your pick tool. That's what it's called, take your pick tool. If you don't have one, oh, I love that thing. I use it for everything, as you'll see. Okay, next, we're gonna take our jug and we're gonna put our jug on here. Our jug is gonna go a little bit at a tilt. I just think that adds a lot of, I don't know, it looks cool. And then we're gonna take our glass and we're gonna put that on dimensionals. So I'll put one there and one there. And we're gonna put that mm, right about eh, a little bit down, a little bit further, right about there. And then we have our hops. You mark my words, you guys. I hope now that I'm talking about it and how foolish I'll feel if I can't remember that this is called a hops. But I'm like, you mark my word, I will not remember what this is called next time. <laughs> but I'm gonna now because I just said. So thank you for that. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it right over here. Okay. And then we've got the twine. So I'm going to do this. Boy, did I sell a lot of, um, these are called a bow jig. This is a bow jig. I sold a lot of these after my live last week. So if you want one, they're $10. Um, I don't make any money on them. That includes postage. And just pop me an email. My email address is kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, at astampabove.com. So kelly, at symbol, astampabove.com. And I can send you one. But they're pretty cool. I have a video that shows you how to use it, how to make double and triple bows and all the fun things. And now I'm looking for, here we go. We're going to use a mini glue dot. Let me throw these on the floor. <laughs> I did clean my office last week and vacuum, so that was pretty cool. And I'll do it again this week, maybe. Okay. So we're going to take and put a mini glue dot. I rolled it up, put it right here, and I'm just gonna bring this in. This is just a little bow. Thought that would look kind of cute there. We still need, uh, where, did our, where did our topper go? Oh, there it is. Okay, we still need this little bugger. So what I'm gonna do, this is our foam for the top of our beer. And I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna put a mini dimensional right up there. And that's all you need to do to secure this onto your glass of beer. Okay, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. This one we're gonna take and we're going to, I'm gonna use mini dimensionals on this one. I'm gonna look at it and I'm gonna put it uh, over here. And then I'm gonna put another one right here because we don't want anything over here on the back or our card won't open, right? So make sure you watch for that. And now I'm just gonna kind of butt this right up here. I'm gonna center it. Oops, push it up a little bit. There we go, this looks good. There we go. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna take some of our rustic metallic adhesive back dots. And we're gonna put one right here. That's a bigger one, this is a smaller one, and here is nothing. <laughs> Here's a bigger one right up there. We've got our funky little envelope here. And hang on, I gotta get the gift card. <gasps> Harley Davidson, here we go. Great. Now, this is an IUOU one. And I thought, well, who could I give this to? Well, my brother 
came and helped Steve do a bunch of stuff at our property. He also came and helped put the cover on the pool, I believe, or something like that. And I thought this would make a great card for him. And you know what I could get him as a, just a little appreciation is like maybe um, uh, a lottery ticket, right? Because I know he'd split it with me if he won. <laughs> no, I wouldn't expect that. But anyways, there is our gift card holder. Perfect for a man. Isn't that cool? Love that. This is my kit class for the month of November. So if you are looking for some fantastic ideas with the Brood for You, check out my class. You'll find um, all the information for my class is going to be on my blog. Under this blog post, when I get done tonight, I will um, finish typing all of that. I've taken pictures already. I'll finish typing all of that, and I'll um, put a link to my kit class information. So it's easy for you to find. That's what I'm trying to say. Doing things and talking at the same time, it's kind of like walking and chewing gum. I'm not really good at it. <laughs> all right, let's keep moving along because um, there's more. Don't worry. Here we go. Everything in the bin. Yay. And I'll set these aside. I'll bring these back out when we're done so we can see all the goodies that we made. Yeah, I thought that was a wine glass. Oh, my good Lord. What did you say it was? Did I write that? I wrote that down, right? Yeah, I think I did. I'll have to look it up now. So I don't sound like an idiot. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for telling me. Okay, next step. Oh, I got to put this away too. Uh, here's all the things. And oh, look, we have another one. <laughs> We're making a mess tonight. All right, next. Oh, this card I made out of necessity. We are going to be using the Celebrate with Tags. So, in the month of November, we have a lot of birthdays in our family. And um, it's my sister's birthday is um, on Wednesday. I already, me and my mom went, well, no, I went shopping by myself. Um, I got my sister and my niece. Um, my niece's birthday is mm, like the 23rd. And um, my sister's birthday is the 9th. And then my nephew's birthday is the 13th. I still have to get him a present. And he loves Thor. So I got to look for that. But anyways, I needed a gift holder and a gift card holder. So if you guys remember, I just showed this to you. So of course you remember. I made this little box last week and I told you that there are other sizes I would be sharing with you. So this is my gift and my little little bag, gift bag. So I'm gonna make a different size gift bag tonight, but first we're going to make the birthday card. And I hope I'm not keeping you too long. If I am, go to bed and come back and you can watch the rest tomorrow or something. But we've got lots of things to make. I have lots of things I need. So this is what we're going to do. Okay, let me grab all my bits and pieces. And here we go. Got some ribbon. I can't lose her gift card because I already bought her a gift card. So that's awesome. Yeah, I went shopping. Oh, and, I'll, and when I get ready to make the gift bag, make sure I show you what her gift is that's going to go in that gift bag because that's important. All right. So, like I said, we're going to be using the Celebrate with Tags. This is a cute little stamp set. It's got 11 images in it. And then we have two different tags and all these fun little elements to go with it. 14 different dies in here. I am pairing it up with the Gingham Cottage Designer Series paper. Who has this? <gasps> this is a really big pack of paper. You get four of each sheet in the difference. So it's small gingham and then big. Small, big. Small, I don't know why that's on the back up there. I'm not sure. Anyways, um, big, small. So this is really, really cool paper. And we're also going to be using Blushing Bride and Basic Gray. Those are the colors that I picked. 
I've got my adhesive sheets because I didn't forget. We're gonna be using this glittered organdy ribbon as well as our foam adhesive strips. So who knows what we're gonna make. Shaker! <laughs> and, uh, la, 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 la. oh, mm, this is so pretty. This is the For Everything Fancy sequence. These all come in one package. Again, they're called For Everything Fancy Sequins. Look at how pretty these are. There are so many different things in here. So there's blue, there's silver, there's um, kind of a shell clear color, there's gold, oh, there's glitter white. So, so pretty. So we've got a pack of blue like that, a pack of green like that, and a pack of pink like that. We're gonna use the pink ones tonight. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We've got our white envelope. This is the um, adhesive sheets. And I'm just gonna grab, let's see, is this a scrap of white? I believe it is. Okay, so I'm gonna grab that. I'm gonna take this scrap of white and I'm gonna put it on, this is the um, adhesive sheets, okay? This turns what you die cut or punch into a sticker. So I'm just gonna put my white layer on here and I'm gonna slide it over a little bit so it's slightly smaller than what I'm cutting here. I don't want this sticky paper sticking out from under what I'm gonna do. So let me put this back in here. You get 12 six by 12 sheets in this. This will last you like forever. It's a, it's a very big pack. Okay, so now we're gonna take this and it's got a little slit in it. If you don't happen to have the slit, you can take your, take your pick tool and just kind of keep pushing at it until it comes open. You can peel this off. There's a little bit more right here. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to put this on basic white. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, am I really? Yes, I really am. Okay. Oops, hang on. I got some sticky on my fingers. Now, we're going to take the dies. And again, this is the celebration tag dies. Pull these right out. So I wish I had a sheet made up like I made up for the fitting florets, but I didn't. Here's a tag and then here's a tag and these fold together. This one makes a little pocket, which is really cool. And then we have all of these neat, whoops, neat, neat elements. We're gonna use the candles. And let me, uh, I just wanna get some of this stuff out of my way here. But you've got all of these elements and they're all stitched dies. We're gonna use this one. This is a rectangle with stitching on it. There's a snowflake. You've got a circle, a heart, a heart, a mitten that um, die cuts the mitten here. You've got a die that cuts out the balloon. Um, you've got some banner dies. Oh, here's more. <laughs> got some little dotty things and another banner die that cuts out these. So lots of really cool elements in here. We're gonna grab this, hang on a second, and we're gonna grab a scrap of um, Blushing Bride. Now my scrap of Blushing Bride needs to be as big as the die, right? So I did measure it, and it is three and a half by eight and a half is what I use. So we're gonna use this particular tag die on here, and we're gonna die cut things, so hang tight. I'm going to bring my machine back in. And you want to make sure that you're putting your die on the front of your cardstock, not on the part with the um, adhesive paper on it. And I'm going to, oops, this is the one I cut on, if you can see all the scratchiness. We're going to run this through. And hang on. We are going to run this other one through, which I already have done. Okay, so that's this is what it cuts out. And now we're going to do some modifications to that. So we're going to bring in. Ah, hang on, things are falling. Good grief. 
um, this tag. So this tag would fold over, okay? And then you would be able to fold these sides in and it would actually hold a gift card, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do something different. So first of all, we're gonna cut this off and I like putting this flat edge against my backboard and we're gonna cut this off. Okay, so now we've cut that off and then I need to cut this tab and this tab off. Can you see those tabs there? I need to cut those off, but you don't wanna put the round edge up there, right? Cause I almost did. So I thought, oh, that's a good idea to share that little tip. You're gonna put the flat edge up here and now I'm gonna cut that side off. Okay, so that looks pretty darn good. Now again, I'm not gonna turn it around and put that round side up there. I'm gonna flip it over so we can keep that flat edge against my backboard or whatever you wanna call it. Okay, I did really good, yay. I don't think, oh, I got a little bit of trimming to do, doggone it. I don't like that little, I didn't get it quite close enough there. So again, we don't wanna put that round edge up there cause that's dumb. <laughs> I don't know if I can cut this with this trimmer. Oh, I guess I can. Yep. I'm gonna trim it just a little bit. Oh, you guys, I got, I got new nails. Look at how pretty they are. Took the pumpkin. Oh, I had a cat and a spider web for Halloween. I took them both off. Okay, that looks pretty good. I did okay there. Um, okay, so now we have two tags and we need both of these for what we're gonna do. So now we are going to take uh, the rectangle die, which is right here. We're gonna take that and we're gonna put it in the middle of one of these. So I'm going to put this in the middle and I'm gonna run that through my die cutting machine. Then we're gonna come up with this. And see how it has that stitching? It has the stitching on the one that came out and the stitching on the one that didn't come out. This we're not gonna use for this card, but I am going to add it to my collection here of other bits and pieces that I didn't use yet because I'm sure I will use them. All right, let me get these all back over here. And here comes our candles. All right, let's see what we're gonna do here. Let's do our stamping right away and we'll get that done with. This is our basic gray card base five and a half by eight and a half. Good night, Sarah. Glad you could join us. I know, like I said, it's gonna get, what do you have for snack when candy corn is gone? Um, you know, I don't know. That's a good question. After the candy corn is gone, I kind of have to go on a little diet. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Good grief, right? <laughs> Um, we've got our basic gray ink and our Blushing Bride. And I'm going to bring in my Happy Birthday and the Blushing Bride. And I'm going to stamp that right over here. Then I'm going to do balloons. Now, I have a post-it note. So I stamped my balloon on a post-it note on the side that's sticky. I got it right up at the top and then I just cut that top of that balloon, right? Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stamp some balloons right here. And I don't want that string on my next balloon that I'm gonna stamp. So I created a little mask, right? And here comes another one. Yay. So I just put some balloons going down the side and that worked out really good. Now I'll take this and put it in my stamp case so I can use it next time too, if I need it. Okay. This is gonna go on, ooh, oh, inside of my card, hang on. This card is actually the same card as the beer card we just made. So I need to score this at one and three quarters. So this would have been scored at one and three quarters and four and a quarter, but I just folded it in half. 
So this is going to be another gift card holder because this is from my niece, Emma. She's also my godchild. So I'm going to make this kind of special, right? Okay. Same size on the DSP. This one is two and a quarter. This one is one and a half. They're both five and a quarter long. So I'm just going to kind of whip through this because we just made a card exactly like this one. Only we're just doing it. It's going to be girly instead of for a man. Because my niece is definitely girly. She's a really sweet girl. I think she's going to be, I want to say 20. Yeah. Okay. And here goes the other one. And we'll put that right here. Don't you love this paper? This is the Blushing Bride Gingham Cottage. And then I thought, ooh, there's a circle die in here, right? So you can use that to die cut right here. And I'm just gonna take my temporary tape. I just kind of eyeball it. You can measure it to get it perfectly centered if you want, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. I'm gonna die cut this, I'll be right back. And I'm really actually doing it. <laughs> Here we go. And here's our little pullout for our gift card holder, or our gift card. All right, again with the tape. And tape. Here we go. Yay! And I got her a gift card to Marisa's, but I also got her a little gift. So that's what we're going to make the bag for. And I want it to match her card because, well, I'm Aunt Kelly and that's how things run in our family. <laughs> My things have to be packaged really nice because it's all about the presentation, right? <laughs> Okay, um, next we're gonna take that inside layer and we're gonna put that inside our card. Just like this. That looks great. Okay, so far so good, right? What are you gonna do with these? Well, we got these little candles and here's how I get the backing off of them. Oops, there we go. Okay, ready? It pulls out all those things just like a Christmas miracle. <laughs> we're gonna take the solid tag and we're gonna put these right on this tag, okay? And here comes the next one. You wanna go to the back and separate them. And we've got another Christmas miracle here. Hang on, I got one stuck on there. And I'm just gonna put this little candle right here. And here comes another one. Here we go. Oh, this one wasn't so Christmassy. This one was a little bit of a stinker. Okay, oops, one more. There we go. Okay. Stick that one right in here. Let me get these out of the way. All right, so here's our tag, you guys. And what I'm gonna do here is I have a piece of window sheet. And our window sheets come, you get two sheets that are 12 by 12. That's a lot of window happening. So this one I cut is two and an eighth by three and a quarter, and it is gonna fit right on the back of this. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our adhesive strips and we're gonna see where we need to go with these so we need to stay away from that window I'm gonna go just like oops hang on oh I had the wrong side sticky I had, I had a side that wasn't really sticky <laughs> we're gonna do this okay 
Now, you could put that on the back of here, but here's why I'm not. I just wanna make sure that I'm putting this so that it's not gonna be seen through the window. So here comes this one. Oh, hang on, I'm not sticking the sticky side down. I'm making this way harder than it needs to be. Okay, so now we're gonna come way down here. You don't wanna to go too deep with this because otherwise you have to use a lot of sequins. Okay, there we go. That's already got the sticky off of it, which I did not do intentionally. Here comes another strip. I'm just gonna cut some of this off so it's easy to work with. And you wanna make sure that you butt this up against where you left off, okay? Cause you don't want your, your um, whatever you're gonna put in there. The sequins would have a pretty hard time coming out, but you just don't want them to leak out. Oops. Oh, I'm doing it again. I'm sticking the side down instead of the back of it. Okay. There we go. All right, now let's make sure that this is not gonna be seen from the front, and it's not. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We are going to pick the backing off, and this seems like not the right time to pick any backing off, but this is why I do it this way. We're gonna put some sequins in here. We don't want our sequins sticking to this now that we picked the backing off of it, right? Because if you sprinkle them all over, they're gonna stick all over it. You have to be careful. And I don't wanna put my sequins in here and then peel this off because you're bumping it around, and if you bounce it, then they'll all get stuck to your stuff and fly out. It's just the experience that I've had with sequins. So I'm gonna take a couple good pinches, maybe two and a half, and, oops, I'm gonna put, oh look at, some of those look like little diamonds, they're so pretty. Close this up right away, okay? Now we're gonna take, this is our little window sheet, and we're gonna put it on the back of this tag that we cut the rectangle out of. And I'm going to do that with mini glue dots. So let me see is the best way to do this. Don't bump that. I did that already. It's not fun. So here goes mini glue dots and I'm just kind of putting them in the corners because I know they're not gonna be seen in the front. And then I'll put one in the middle of the side and another one over here, and I think that's gonna be quite sufficient. We don't need to do anything else, okay? So I've got six mini glue dots on here, the back of my tag, and you wanna make sure that you can still get through that hole up there, and I can. Look at that, ha, ah, perfect, okay? Now we're gonna take this, and we're gonna put it together. Now I've got one more tip for you. If this kind of thing makes you crazy, you could use two window sheets. We could have taken one window sheet before we put this front on and you could have put it right over top of your thing. Well, I guess you wouldn't need two. But anyways, you could have put the window sheet on and then glued this to the rest, but whatever. You'll figure it out. It's pretty easy to do it this way. I really do like doing it this way because I have less problem with those sequins jumping out of, at me. Yeah, the um, adhesive strips do make the shaker card super easy. Okay, so here's our fun card. We've got our cute little shakers in there, right? These are really, really pretty. And um, where'd that box go? Hmm. Let me see if I can find it. Box, box, where'd you go? Right here. These are the four everything fancy sequins. We have them in blue and in green, and they're absolutely incredibly gorgeous. All right, now what we're gonna do with our little shaker, I've got uh, seven inches of that um, glitter ribbon, and I'm going to take that and double it up here, and I'm gonna cut it at a sharp angle. And I'm gonna go through the back of my tag. 
And I'm gonna put that through that hole that my tag die cut. Hang on, I kind of let them go and they, oh. There we go. Okay, you're gonna leave that loop and you're gonna put this right through that loop. Now you gotta be careful, don't pull too hard. You, this is just paper and you don't wanna rip your little tag hole out there. Okay, there we go. And now I'm gonna cut this down. And I'm gonna cut it about like this and about like that. I like to kind of stagger them a little bit. Isn't that cute? And now I'm going to adhere this to the front of my card. And so I'm gonna go down the middle, This, I'm just looking at my whole card and I'm centering this right where, oops, I'm gonna put it down a little bit so the these aren't sticking up so high. Okay, so there's my little shaker. Here's my happy birthday. Here's my beautiful gift card. The only thing we have left to do, I wanna put a little bit of sequins on the front. So what I'm looking for is this one is just a glittery one. It's like a white shell type of material and it's just got glitter on it. So I'm just gonna put a tiny little bit, a teeny weeny little bit of glue on there. And then I hold it down for a little bit with my fingernail. Here comes another one. Oops, a little bit more, there you go. And a little bit more. So here comes another glitter one. And of course you could use whichever ones you like. It's completely up to you. This one I need to turn over. They're a little bit cupped. Some of them are flat, some of them are cupped. But you can see, um, why didn't, yep, yeah, there's pearls, there's pearls, there's gold, there's silver. There's pink iridescent. They've got pink like octagon little stop sign things, whatever those are called in there. They've got plain shell colored. They got the glitter shell colored. There's just so many different. And of course there's pink in this one, green in the other one, and blue in the other one of all these things. So they're just really cool. I love the fact that I have these. Hang on, let me throw that. <laughs> okay. Here's our card, and then we need to stamp our envelope. Here comes our envelope. Now, you guys, I will not be live next weekend because I'm going to be with Barb and Dina. I'm using basic gray. I love the font on this happy birthday, right? And then I'm going to use this little balloon in the Blushing Bride. I'm going to do that. This is going to be the front of my envelope. And let me close these up. Ooh, it's really windy out. We had really strong winds. We were at that hotel and we were um, watching some people unload their car and all their stuff blew away. Like a, a little little dog or cat carrier blew away. I thought there was an animal in it, but there wasn't. I was like, oh my gosh, their cat or dog just blew away. There was nothing in it. Thank goodness. But the, their kid, the guy's like holding onto the kid's hand and we're like, don't let the kid go. It was like 50 mile an hour winds in Wisconsin yesterday. So it was pretty horrible. All right, the other thing I love about the stamp set is the back stamp. I know this is dangerous to do now. <laughs> you might wanna do this first, but it says made with love. And I just think that's so incredibly sweet to be able to have that and put that on the back. And I'll put my name on there, Aunt Kelly, because she'll know. Oh, that reminds me, you guys. My my niece, Emma, is a very talented artistically. She painted this sign for me. It, it sits in the window in my office. Yeah, isn't that cool? I love it, love it. Um, Deidre says, does my chamois stay damp in the case? Yes, it does. I have not. I rinsed this out before I left on Friday. And yes, it's still damp. So I love keeping it in the case. I've never had any problems of with it molding or doing anything like that or stinking. Yeah, I have a sequin on my arm. Oh, look at that. 
That's the one I tried to flick on the floor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so there is my niece's 20th birthday card. Isn't that cute? Now, we have one more project. This is going to be quick and easy, you guys. So I hope you can hang with me. And again, I know I'm running late. If you can't, it's okay. Okay? Um, just go ahead. Go to bed. You can watch tomorrow. Here comes our last project. Let me get my little pieces up here. So this is going to go with the card. Let me put this on the back here. This is going to go with the card. And remember, this bag was six by six. This one is going to be with starting with an eight by eight piece. So let me grab my paper trimmer because you know you need to score. This is eight by eight. And again, it is the Gingham Cottage Designer Series paper. We're going to score the top at one inch. And the other three sides at two inches. So two inches, this is my top up here that we scored at one. This is two, this is two. And I will have a template drawing for you guys with this on it too all the dimensions for this. Oh, shoot, I need two pieces, hang on. I don't know why, but I only thought I needed one, and that was wrong. So let me grab, look at how big this pack of paper is. Good grief, that's a lot of gingham paper. Here we go. So I need another one, eight by eight. I need to cut this one too, right? Or score it. Okay, so here's one inch. And then two inches on all three sides. One. Two. And three. Now, just like we did on the box last week, or the bag, I should say. Hang on. Did I miss a side? Oh, that didn't score very well. Hang on. I can barely feel that one. Okay, grab your snips. This is the one inch side. That's going to get folded backwards. And then we're going to cut this one. And we're going to cut this right out of here. One of them gets cut out. The other one only gets the sides slit. Okay, so I can't remember if it's the front or the back. And we'll, I'll tell you when we're when you get there. Okay, so there's that. And then all of these, whoops, all of these fold that way. Here's one, here comes the other one. Here's my one inch, go backwards on that. And then the rest of these go like this, like this, and like this. Now this one, we're not gonna cut that box out, or that, yeah, that square out, not box, square. We're just gonna cut like this, okay? 
Okay. Oops, and then this side too. We're just gonna cut this. All right, now we glue these two together like this. Remember this? I'm gonna glue. I'm gonna get these all ready to go. I'm gonna cut this at a little bit of a slant just because boxes go together really nice if you cut a little tiny wedge, a little sliver out. And I did that on the last one too. Okay, you're gonna meet these up like this. They should meet up perfectly if you scored and cut right. And now we're gonna take this piece. Oops. <laughs> And I'm going to glue that together just like that. Make sure everything looks good. Okay. And it does. These come up like this. We're going to put some glue on them. These are the tabs. And then you come up like this. And then like this. Square it up good. Okay, and then this goes like this. It's so simple, isn't it? Now this is substantially bigger, right? This is eight by eight, this was six by six. So all we have to do now is put adhesive, whoops, on the side of our box. Hang on, I gotta grab that baby wipe because I got glue here on my desk. All right, so get a little bit more glue over here. And this is gonna be my gift bag to give Emma her little gift that I got to go with her gift card. And I always like to do that. I always like to give a little gift and it's just a little something. It's not you know, like something big. It's just a little something. So I'm gonna put my hands in here and press that down. Polly loves the bag. Okay, whoops. Ah, uh, that's not sticking up here. I'm gonna add just a little bit more glue. There we go. Oops, that's cushioned out a little bit. Kelly, Kelly. Okay, here's our little gift bag. All right. And then what I thought I would do, I have this all done. It's ready to roll is I took the tag again and I just cut half of it. You know, this was the big tag, but I only cut half of it. So I'm just going to cut on that score line to cut off that other part. We don't need that. We only need this. And then I cut a piece of white and my white is one and seven eighths by three. And I thought, oh, hang on, where'd my stamp go? Right here. There's a two and a from stamp in that set. And so I thought, oh, I could stamp. Let's see, do I wanna use basic gray to make it all match? I think I do, I'm gonna use basic gray. And, oops, hang on, I'll bring in my, hello, Kelly. Okay, I'm gonna stamp this right up here. Oh, that turned out really good, right? And then how about a little bit of a balloon on there? I gotta leave room to put my from, right? How about right there? Oh, love it. Okay. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Hang on. I forgot. I just figured this out earlier. Okay, so we're gonna do two from. Yay. We're not gonna stamp a balloon. We're gonna use these candles. And I think I just have two of them, but I think I only wanna use, make one. It cuts out two. So I put this, the sticky paper on the back. I'm gonna get this ready to roll. <gasps> Almost a Christmas miracle. Okay. And I've gotta leave room for my, my to and from, right? So I figure I can sign my name right over here. How cute is that? I can, I'm gonna save this because I only need one. And I'm gonna put this right 
on my tag that I cut out from the tag bundle. There we go. Isn't that cute? Matchy, matchy, that's right. And then my ribbon is right here. And I think what I wanna do here is just tie a bow. Okay, so tie a bow. Kind of a little bit bigger bow. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to use dimensionals to add this to my bag. Okay, so I think I wanna put it right like that. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna put two on here. There we go. I'm gonna put it at a little bit of an angle because I like that. You can put your straight if you want, it's okay. Does anybody see my mini glue dots? Hmm. Well, hmm. oh, here they are. They're under my little dimensionals. And then we're gonna use mini glue dot right over the circle, oh, <laughs> maybe. There we go. Here comes our bow. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, so we have this done. Now the next thing that I wanted to do is see if this piece of tissue paper, do you love it? I did the balloons and the happy birthdays. I wanna see if this piece of tissue paper, now this is the bottle, I bought her a bottle of perfume and it's called Lucky Me and it's a Marisa's brand. And I'm going to take this ribbon off of it because that certainly doesn't match what we're doing here. And I love altering stuff, right? So I am going to take this and tie it with my glitter ribbon. And I think the box is really pretty, so it'll match pretty good. I know, right? There we go. All right, I'm gonna trim that off, trim this off. Cute, right? And then I'm gonna take my tissue paper and put this down in here. Now see, I was thinking that I might need two pieces of tissue paper. Wasn't sure. Yeah, I think I need one more, you guys. I think I definitely need one more. So rather than wrapping it around my gift, I'm gonna make another one. Here we go. This was super easy to make, by the way. So I just stamped my balloons all over. Turn your tissue paper this way and that way. Make it go off the edge so it looks like it was actually printed. Just like that. Okay, and then I brought in my happy birthday. And I just filled in the spaces. I love doing this. I love making stuff that goes together, that looks like it's a complete gift set. Let's get some over here. That looks good. Okay, so rather than wrap it around my gift, I'm just gonna put my gift in here. 
and I'm gonna take my tissue paper with my writing on the outside here, and I do this. So it's all nice and fluffy, and I stuff it down in there. And then I'll take the other one and do the same thing. I'm gonna use my take your pick tool. Well, I'll use my handle of my blending brush to help me get that down in there. Look at how cute that is, right? Oh, I know! <laughs> she is very special, Barbara. She's my godchild. She's also my niece. And she's just a super, super nice girl. So we've got this. And here is her adorable shaker card with the gift card in it, right? And, and she loves Maurice's. I know that. So that's cool. Here comes our other projects that we made tonight. This is, whoops, the same exact card. How different is that, right? Same exact card. And then we have our Technique Club card for October. So again, if anybody's interested in the details on the Technique Club, it's a complete online club. There's We don't get together, it just... You get this mailed to you so you can collect these and have like a library of them. Um, the link will be under my video. I'll put it under there. It's also going to be at the very um, top above the video on my blog post for this. Also, don't forget to join my... Um, my newsletter list. I've been sending out the 12 weeks of holidays. I hope those of you that are on my list have really been enjoying those. I have a lot of fun getting that ready to go for you guys. That was also delayed because it's it's housed on my blog, so that was a delay too. And I do have some mail to share with you. So if you guys aren't completely done with me, <laughs> let me share my mail. I don't have a turn, I don't have a ton of it, but I do have some fun stuff to share. So this came to me from Wendy Morse. Wendy sent some gold swirls, some adhesive back sequins and gems, and some fine sparkle adhesive back gems. She said she had extras and wanted to share them and that I should give them away. So thank you so much, Wendy. She sent them with this beautiful card. Now this uses the dryer sheet technique, which is really a cool technique too. This is the Scary Cute bundle. And um, yeah, really cute, cute, cute card. Thank you so much, Wendy, you are a doll. We will enjoy these and I will give them away. And then she sent me these and you can tell that I had to open them, Wendy, and eat them immediately. They are Jelly Belly candy corn and they're really cute and they're good. So. I have been eating them. Thank you, Wendy, so much. You're so kind and thoughtful. Next up, we have a package from Lori Watts. Oh, this is so cute, you guys. So Lori sent this beautiful card. Oh, beautiful coloring. And she said, thank you for the package of goodies and all your hard work on the stamp of Palooza. It was awesome. And that was our fall retreat. But look at this. This is a Christmas ornament made with designer paper. Isn't this so beautiful? This is the Gnome Designer Series paper and the same glitter ribbon we used on Emma's card and project tonight. Isn't that sweet? Yeah, a little ornament. Thank you so much. That was so kind of you, Lori. I love it and I will hang that up. And Christmas is coming. <laughs> Next. We have Robin Sutherland, Sutherland, and she's thanking me for oh a gift of the label, leaf label and gems. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, gorgeous. I love I love your card. It's really pretty. Okay, next up we have Kimberly Milan, and she sent me this cute Halloween card. Look how cute this is! <gasps> ah, yay! Yeah. Another thank you card. Super, super cute, Kimberly. Thank you so much. 
And this card is from Rose Bell. I thought this was really cute too. I love this glimmer paper, but look, there it is again. Isn't that sweet? Rose um, is thanking me for all the fun. Rose, you are so very welcome. Thanks for your cool card. I love it. I love it. I love the spooky um, sponging she did here too, because it does look kind of spooky, right? Okay. I think that is all the mail. Let me make sure I don't have anything left over here. I do not. Okay, you guys. What a fun night, right? Thank you so much for joining me and thank you for sticking with me. For those of you who couldn't, I completely understand. Go to bed. There's always tomorrow, right? All right, you guys. I will not be live um, on the 13th because I'm going to be in Iowa, on, in India on my way back to Iowa, out of town. I will see you again on... Oh, no. I Oh, geez. I'll figure something out. <laughs> gun hunting starts here on the 19th and so I'm going to be gone so I'll figure something out I'll probably make a Facebook live or a YouTube live not live for you on the 20th and then I'll be back live again on the 27th I'll figure something out I promise all right you guys have yourselves a wonderful um couple weeks I will post pictures if you're on Facebook please come come visit me. Um, I'll post some pictures. I'll try to post pictures on my blog for those of you that are not on Facebook. And uh, thank you guys for all the fun. I'm so happy to spend my Sunday evenings with you. And I'm just reading through some of your comments. You are so welcome. You guys are so kind. Have yourselves a good couple weeks. Good night.